Tabua, 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 Untuk terlihat kembali guna barang enam puluh lima enam bantu enam sen. Oh lor lima, lagi lagi susu dalam pasar. Untuk untuk terlihat enam bola FM enam bantu enam sen. Bola FM. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Akusifa Pali. In this bulletin, concerns over gravel extraction in the Navua River. Education Ministry firm on its decision on boarding school intake policy. And more business opportunities open up in PNG for Fiji. Gravel extraction in the Navua River is becoming a worry for those who use the river and depend on it for their livelihood. They're asking the government to intervene and stop the extraction altogether. Eleanor Turangi view with this story from Navua. The Navua River flows for 65 kilometers to the south coast and is known for the scenic beauty of the rugged mountain landscape. Discover Fiji Tours has been operating along the Navua River for the past 28 years and the owners feel their business is being threatened by the extraction of gravel along the river. Now we can't carry eight people on, on a boat. Before we used to carry eight, nine people, ten. Now we can't do that, we're only six, seven. Yeah. That's how we, you know, facing the problem now. And uh, we get damaged propellers, damaged propellers. Nearly every week we, you know, have to buy, and they cost over $200 each, those uh, boat propellers, yeah. The river runs past about 20 villages upstream. Villagers wash, bath and fish in the river and they often see oil from these excavators floating down river, polluting the source of livelihood. Before, we could come in our boats at night. Now, we can. The water level has dropped due to the digging downstream. Our plantations are affected. The land is slipping into the river. This is one of the markers that marks the water level of the Navo River opposite Nakavu village. And along with the rocks here, it's been exposed due to the intense extraction of gravel along the river. The continuous excavation done has changed the landscape of the Navo River. Before the river was going the other side, the other side. But now, as you can see, all this land has been gone away. You can see it. It's a big damage in our property. They were digging, extracting gravel from the other side of the river and coming to our side and taking all the gravel from our side. FBC News understands that four companies are extracting gravel from the river. Villagers and landowners claim the extractions have gone beyond the prescribed boundaries. They are pleading with government to intervene and stop gravel extraction altogether. Now a stop work notice has been issued to one company, All China Earthworks Limited, and another company has been taken to court. Peter Chan of All China Earthworks Limited told FBC News they have a few issues with their gravel extraction license and works have been stopped. PS for Lands Malakai Finau says they are meeting with landowners, excavators and other stakeholders to solve the issue. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. A team of police officers from Rakiraki and villages from Burelevo in Saivo continued to search for a 10-year-old boy believed to be swept away by strong currents yesterday. Police spokesperson Atunaisa Sokomori says the boy was swimming in the Burelevo River with his friends when they realized he was missing. Sokomori is calling on parents not to be complacent but make an effort to be with their children when they are swimming. The search was stopped last night and continued this morning. The Education Ministry will not change its stance on the intake policy at government boarding schools and the Takambau, Ratu Kandavu Levu and Queen Victoria School. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy made the stance clear at the Education Reforms Consultation at Suva Grammar School yesterday. Sainia Namboyli reports. 
Concerns continue to be raised by parents and scholars on the Ministry of Education's intake policy for the three prominent government boarding schools, Andi Dakombao, Ratu Kandabulevu, and Queen Victoria School. Parents in urban schools who want to send their children to our prominent boarding schools, QVS, ACS, RKS, uh, maybe because the parents are ex-scholars of these uh, schools, and yet there is a limitation on them. Minister for Education Dr. Mahanda Reddy was firm, saying their decision remains. So many ex scholars we have from our case in QVS that there will be no space left for anyone from outside, and that will become a network school. The boarding facility is there to accommodate children from areas where there is no school in the closer proximity of the home, and we want the parents to send their child to a boarding facility rather than put them with some relatives and the children loiter around. In April last year, Dr. Reddy announced that government boarding schools will only cater for students from remote areas. Another issue raised in during the consultation yesterday is the free education grant paid to each school. We have uh, changed the formula. For larger schools, the per capita grant will be a bit less. The smaller schools in interior and maritime where the fixed cost has pretty much the same, it will be higher. Dr. Reddy also clarified concerns on the class 8 examination results. The provisional result is this. When the result is out, we are giving one month's time to the child to make an appeal, if you want, for recount or recheck. If your child is not applying for recount and recheck, they can uh, email the exams office. We'll give you the formal result notice. That's all. We've Thanks. done that. We've been doing it. The last round of public consultations is being held in Lombasa today. Sainia Nimbuela, FBC News. Fiji has been offered new opportunities to invest in Papua New Guinea following bilateral meeting between our Trade Minister Fayaz Koya and his PNG counterpart Richard Maru in Suva this week. This is to strengthen bilateral trade and business relations between the two leading countries in the region. PNG's Trade Minister Richard Maru is currently on an official visit in the country to discuss investment opportunities and business prospects that Fiji and PNG can work towards together. He has highlighted that PNG is very much interested in Fiji's manufacturing and textiles industry. Fiji cannot continue to just market their goods to PNG. Eventually we'll have competition there. So all I'm saying is you should seriously look at establishing manufacturing operations in PNG. Maru says that with PNG now focusing on opening its market to Indonesia it will give leeway to Fiji to access and tap into the Indonesian market. We would do anything to, to support you and assist you, provide land and what have you, to, to make it easier for your companies to uh, invest in Papua New Guinea. Either as 100% Fijian companies or even as joint venture companies with Papua New Guinea if you want to set the risk of investment uh, in Papua New Guinea. We also uh, welcome uh, comments made by the minister with respect to Fijian companies wanting to invest in Papua New Guinea. It's a great opportunity. And, and uh, of course, the other way around also, Papua New Guinea companies wanting to invest in Fiji. We uh, will undertake at least one trade mission or investment mission annually. The Fijian government has commended PNG for its continued support for great aspirations in the region. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, 75 local unions to hold elections this year. Andy, and I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sonny from Canberra. I love listening to Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am Tawwa, and I am Shandil and Ashnil. Tawwa is locked in. I am here to come. Mirchi FM is in the air. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Shelly in Tanga Nosori. Mirchi music simply been dance in Nosori. Mirchi FM, Valley Lubusin. Mirchi FM, Mere Nasna. Welcome back. This is FBC News. 75 trade unions are expected to hold the elections this year, and the Fijian Elections Office are up and ready rolling out its plans. While 2015 has been a challenging year, the Elections Office is looking forward to a more busy year this year. The Fijian Elections Office has confirmed there will be two union elections and 16 branch elections 
held by the end of this month and towards the beginning of next month. These are relatively large unions, with one of them having more than 2,000 registered members. The National Union of uh, Factory and Commercial Workers, uh, these are, this union is mostly for workers in supermarkets uh, of a major retail company, and uh, um, they are based all over the country, so, so we will be organizing for union elections to take place all over the country. While the second trade union details is still being finalized, Sanim says another awareness session will be conducted with the various trade unions. Uh, they will be present to, to um, uh, understand the process that we will be using. Uh, we are looking forward to collaborating with the Ministry of Labor to, to actually uh, do deliver these awareness sessions. Sanim adds many union elections will be due this year in accordance with the individual constitutions. Nomination of those standing the election will be verified by the elections office before being made public. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Economic growth in the East Asia and Pacific region slowed to an estimated 6.4% last year from 6.8% in 2014. In its latest report, the World Bank has projected slow growth this year as well. Ritika Pratap reports. Growth in the East Asia and the Pacific region is projected to slow to 6.3% this year, with China's expansion expected to ease to 6.7%. The region, including China, is anticipated to see growth accelerate modestly in 2016 to 4.8%. The World Bank in its latest report has estimated Fiji's economy grew by 4% last year, and the same time forecast that it will expand by 3.5% this year. Data provided in the bank's January 2016 Global Economic Prospects noted a further drop to 3.1% next year and 3% in 2018. The bank says anemic recovery in emerging markets will weigh heavily on global growth this year. It says weak growth among major emerging markets will weigh on global growth this year but economic activity should still pick up modestly to a 2.9% pace from 2.4% growth in 2015 as advanced economies gain speed. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Fiji National University has big plans this year in improving its standard of education. The plans include changes in its policies, introduction of new programs as a review of its processes and procedures. Kelly Vazala has the details. Learning, teaching and research will remain a priority for the Fiji National University this year. FNU Chancellor Iqbal Janif says to start off the year, the university is reintroducing new programs. We will be looking at some uh, uh, post-level uh, programs uh, in uh, the area of uh, social policy, postgraduate diploma in social policy, postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurship and management, a uh, doctorate in social policy, master in pathology, postgraduate diploma in oral surgery, to name a few. Geneve says the university's medicine program is attracting interest from Fiji and the region. The programs in uh, medicine, yes, receive the biggest number of uh, interest, you know, number of students wanting to enroll. And these, are, these programs, unfortunately, are quota controlled. One major challenge for the university is maintaining all its properties and facilities around the country which Janiv says will need upgrading. Work on the upgrading of the Lombasa campus continues. And the government has given us a grant of uh, $5 million to progress work on that campus in 2016. And we are hoping that we will be able to start work uh, at that campus. The number of students enrolled at FNU over the last three years has averaged over 30,000. This number is expected to increase this year. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Some food voucher vendors today renewed their agreements with the Social Welfare Department. Carpenters Fiji Limited, Morris Hedstrom, Daud Musa, Dan Raj Chauhan Enterprise, 
and Vanita Uluindau Shop signed the agreements today to cater for food voucher recipients. Venda Daud Musa from Korovo will be receiving food voucher recipients in the Tailevu area. Shop Director Mohamed Rafiq says this program has greatly benefited the less fortunate. I appreciate and it's a very good scheme and people getting benefit from them. It's very good. Uh, basic food item like sugar. Uh, we don't allow sugar. People sometimes they want to take it but we don't give. Because only flour, rice, uh, biscuit and all that item. The food voucher allowance has increased from $30 to $50. A total of 26,376 recipients are benefiting from the program. Coming up next in sports, Ryan excited about 2016 prospects. And Silver Cricket coffers affected by braiding works at Albert Park. All that and more after the break. I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Raki Raki. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back and this is FBC Sports. For the phone, Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan is looking forward to see what fortunes lie ahead for the team in 2016. The soft-spoken mentor shared his excitement about the remaining legs of the World 7 Series and preparation for the Rio Olympic Games. continue to grow year on year since its inception, but it's not just the fans that are excited about the year to come. Certainly from my point of view, you know, 10 years now on the circuit, it's nice to go to different venues and big city venues. You know, Sydney, huge. Looking forward to going to Singapore as well. Paris will be fantastic. It's great to go back to back when you've got a big tournament like Dubai, sometimes it drops down a level and that's not going to happen this year because you've got the different tournaments, you've got the Olympics, you've got the 15s players coming into some of the teams and all of that sort of stuff just makes this a very different type of year. With Sevens making its first appearance at the Olympic Games later in the year, competition is fierce amongst all the squads, but for a country that holds the sport so dear, there is an even greater opportunity for the Fijians who make the cut. For the 12 boys that end up making that team, uh, you know, it will give them a legacy on the island that, that will last for all their days. When the Sevens is on, that's it. It's, it's, it's everybody's watching. You know, um, Fiji Airways tell me about the amount of people that call off sick if the games are on Fridays and Saturdays. You know, and I've never been in Brazil and coached a Brazilian football team. There's, I'm sure, various other examples. But a Fiji Sevens team in Fiji takes over the country takes over the, the feel-good factor, it lifts their spirits. And when we won the World Series and we're driving through the villages back to the Suva and their villages are laying children on the middle of the road, laying them down so we had to stop the van and get out and meet people, I think it shows you the passion that they hold and, and also the national fervour around Sevens. It's the one thing that we can, can actually claim to be the best in the world at. Meanwhile, the next leg of the World 7 Series is in Wellington on January 30th and 31st. The Westfield Dragons have never won the Bailey's Fiji Coral Coast Sevens title since the inaugural tournament in 2010. The Dragons, under the guidance of former National Sevens manager Epeli Langilo, will be seeking glory against the odds in a pool featuring defending champions Police, Daveta and Germany. We saw the draw and... Uh... The boys, um, I think um, we will be fielding a team uh, that's worth uh, watching on the day. And uh, we're always uh, preparing uh, for the best from the pool games. The Bailey's Fiji's Coral Coast Sevens kicks off next Thursday and offers a main prize purse of $20,000. 
the Sambeto Roosters have claimed the Rugby League Nines tournament title in Nandi this afternoon. The Vodafone Cup defending champions beat newly promoted top eight side Coastline Roos 16-14 in a gritty final at Prince Charles Park to collect the $1,000 prize money. Organizers say the tournament was a good pre-season hit out for teams in the lead-up to the Vodafone Cup competition. We are thinking of uh, starting off with the season with nines we, as uh, Vodafone Cup is coming over on, on April. So it's a good time for us to have uh, nines building up to a Vodafone Cup. Vodafone Cup. Another ninth tournament will be held prior to Vodafone Cup season kickoff in April. The Vodafone Fiji under-23 football side is slowly molding into a solid outfit ahead of the tour to Spain later this month. Coach Frank Farina says the training camp has allowed the players to get the combinations in order for the Rio Olympic Games build-up. Silent Odakadaka reports. The national under-23 side is gearing up for a six-match tour of Spain this month and officials couldn't be more happier about the atmosphere in camp. Yeah, they've been training very well. Uh, I've been pleased with their, their effort and you know, what they've been doing. So, look, I think they're getting excited about, about going as well. Um, so, yeah, a few more days. Uh, we leave next week on Wednesday. Sola Wanga has been roped in to fill in the void left behind by Gary Spassad's absence and Farina is confident the young bar striker will not disappoint. Uh, he's been training re really well and... Uh, you know, they've had a bit of, bit of time off, so but, you know, I, I know what he can do, um, you know, obviously with the under-20s and him scoring in the World Cup. So, look, he's, he's, he's a good young player and he'll just keep improving. Farina is looking forward to see how the players will respond to facing quality opposition and it's all part of his master plan to prepare the side for the Rio Olympics. Silent Dota Kavaka, FBC Sports. And it seems the upgrading works at Albert Park in Suva also has its downfalls. The Silver Cricket Association's coffers has taken a beating as officials have had to resort to alternative venues around the capital city to host weekly matches. Chalian Dodakataka has more. The second round of the Suva Cricket competition got off to a rainy start today at Bacchus Park and Suva Grammar School. But the weather is the least of the association's worries with the high cost of holding matches away from its traditional pitch at Abba Park, which is undergoing renovation. So when we were playing, I was paying for Albert Park. We were paying for thirty dollars uh, a ground every Saturday. Normally we were paying sixty dollars, sixty to eighty dollars a week. But this one, even grandma, we paying two hundred dollars for only one Saturday. This ground, it's twenty three dollars an hour. So imagine we play for eight hours times twenty three. Officials can only hope that upgrading works at Elba Park is completed on time as the change of venue is also affecting the players. Because most of the teams are uh, village-based uh, uh, teams and uh, they're sponsored by, uh, most of them are not working. And uh, the change of venue from uh, Albert Park, we can't do anything about it because they're upgrading Albert Park. At least we have uh, two grounds available, one at Grema and uh, the other. Uh, and the other one is the one we are currently using it. The association is grateful to Cricket Fiji for pitching in to help its financial shortcomings in order to host its weekly Saturday games. Talent Dota Kavaka, FBC Sports. Showers were experienced over most places today. Tropical Cyclone Ula intensified to a Category 3 cyclone with maximum sustained winds of 70 knots close to its center. It was located to the far southwest of Fiji at 4 p.m. today and is anticipated to move towards the southwest just east of New Caledonia. Meanwhile, a trough of low pressure lies slow moving over Samoa. All centers recorded temperatures in the high 20s. Occasional showers over the Lao Group, the eastern, northern and interior parts of larger islands, elsewhere afternoon or evening showers. Outlook for Monday, cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And before we go, our main stories again, concerns over gravel extraction in the Navua River, Education Ministry firm on its decision on boarding school intake policy, and more business opportunities open up in PNG for Fiji. 
And on to this week's poll question, and we are asking, should Osea Colini Sao captain the Fiji 7th team to the Olympics? Visit our FBC website to take part. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Akusita Pali. Good night. Hi, my name is Liviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi, and today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Krish. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. I'm Juliana. I'm from Mautoka, and I like listening to Today FM. Hi, my name is Shelly. I live in Arere. Today FM rocks my rock and lollipop. Bula, my name is So. I'm from Navua. I like listening to today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky and Today FM rocks with my flip flops. Today's hit music on Today FM.